welcome to the inaugural edition of Morning Line, the USTA's weekly news magazine, where we hope to both inform and entertain you. I'm Paul Ramlow. And I'm Allison Conzi. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to taking you behind the scenes of the sport of harness racing each and every week. Well, Allison, it seems fitting that we debut our new show in the first week of May, as many of the sports stars are now returning to action. The past two weeks, our focus has been on Meadowlands Racetrack, where in the morning qualifying races, many of the 2014 Dan Patch Award winners, including Horse of the Year J.K. She's a Lady, made their initial 2015 starts. Our Ken Weingartner caught up with Nancy Johansson at the Meadowlands last week, where she shared her thoughts on the upcoming 2015 season with her stable star. It's a long, tough winter, but we got a lot of foundation in yours, which made me happy, and the owners are great, you know, everybody's kind of on the same page where she's going to get ready when she's ready, and we're not going to push her to get her ready too soon, so um, it makes my job easier. She's just, she's a ham, so got her ears up in the back behind me. It was a busy week for harness racing in the Midwest. The finale of Miami Valley's second season brought the Grand Circuit to Ohio, and with it, new track records. Sunday's highlights were the Miami Valley Distaff Trot, featuring Dan Patch Award winners Shake It Carry and Classic Martine, as well as Meadows Maturity Victor Daylon Miracle. Shake It Carry looked strong, moving to the front just past the quarter, but it was Classic Martine who shook loose in the stretch to win in a new all-age track record, 152-2. and two. Another track record fell just two races later in the Chip Noble Memorial for older pacing mares, when you're gonna kiss me or not, went wire to wire to score in 150 and three. We also got to catch up with some of Harness Racing's leading drivers and trainers who are gearing up for stake season to hit full stride and heard about some of 2015's most highly anticipated returns. Driver Tim Tietrich is sitting behind tons of trotting power with market share the older warrior returning and also a possible Hamiltonian contender from the same barn. Dapper Don, Linda Toscano's horse, and I know you'd said, and Linda wasn't a huge fan of this horse at first, but he put in a huge qualifier the other day, and he's Hamiltonian eligible. You know, both qualifiers from him from last year, he's really grown up and really matured, and he's uh, he's allowing me to drive him, which is a big key in those big races, and so far, knock on wood, he's really coming along very well, and, you know, the sky's the limit on him right now. Ah, he's the same old horse, you know, he shows up, he's a little more professional about it, but uh, he's just a really nice horse, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's really easy to love, because he's... Uh, He's not that typical horse that brings a lot of money at the sale. He's kind of an underdog on a good story. So, you know, he's a $16,000 yearling, and, you know, he tries his butt off. You know, he's win the Hamiltonian, and he's not supposed to do that. And, you know, he just he, he likes to work, and he likes to win races, so I really like that. And north of the border, two-year-old Dan Patch Award champion and Meadowlands Pace winner, he's watching qualified for the first time in his four-year-old season. He showed a solid line, finishing second and kicking home in 26-4, and four, but trainer Dave Maneri feels there's still room for improvement before we see his best. Impressed me almost every time he you know goes on the racetrack. Um, we took it easy with him the other day. I wish I had another week in hand. You know we kind of had a long cold winter at home. Um, you know he, uh, he's come back really good. You know the other day I could have been a little bit happier with him, um, but I'm sure we'll work it out. And while it's not exactly Sophie's choice, Yannick Shingra is going to have a tough decision to make come the second Saturday in August. Currently, he's the driver of three main Hamiltonian contenders. Yeah, I have a lot of the good ones, and um, you know, one is New York, and you know, Pennsylvania, a couple in Pennsylvania, and obviously the Philly. So, so they won't match up for uh, no, they won't have to race against each other for a little while. So, it gives me a chance to uh, to make up my mind. But um, you know, it's a good problem to have. Looks like we found the one person hoping Mission Brief opts for the Oaks. And following on the heels of Miami Valley's closing day was the opening day of action from Scioto Downs this past Tuesday. The first race saw plenty of action as 26 to 1 long shot, positively perfect, parlayed a five wide move from last to first to earn his first victory of 2015. Winner in the first race, how's that feel? <laughs> it feels great. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Winner on the first day back, how's it feel to be back at Scioto? It feels great. I, I miss being here all summer. Weather's good? And the weather's nice. <laughs> And on the backside, drivers were happy to be back at their home track and ready to renew rivalries. I'm glad to be back here, and you know this track here is so fast, and the money's good. Well, it's better here than it is at the other tracks, so I'm eager to get going and rock and roll. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day. You know, I'm just uh, looking forward to this year, and hopefully, I can chase Josh around there enough to finish second to him a few times, make some money. And you're gonna be gunning for that title this year? Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, we got a bunch of good drivers here. Uh, uh, some new faces, uh, new horses here, so it, it ought to be interesting. One minute! And outrider 
Cindy Johnson and her 19-year-old super horse, Bo, were happy to be back to work, too. He enjoys his time off, so. And I did, too. <laughs> yeah. Ten horses dropped into the box on Monday for the Arthur Cutler Memorial for older trotters at the Meadowlands. All ten will advance to the May 16th final, so eliminations will not be required for this weekend. However, a Cutler prep race will be held this Saturday for the ten older stars as part of the TVG Open Series. Miladies Monet, the winner sensation for trainer Kevin McDermott, heads the field coming off a victory last weekend in the Meadows Maturity in Western Pennsylvania. He will take on Daryl Beer's Wind of the North, who will be heading to Europe later this month for the Elite Lop in Sweden. Also in the field is 2013 Horse of the Year Be a Magician, taking on the boys, and two-time Dan Patch Award winner Market Share making his season's debut. Taking a look at the race in this week's segment of Paul's Paddock Picks, I'm going to go with Miladies Monet, who has won six of nine starts in 2015. Hall of Famer John Campbell gets the call from post three. For place, I will take Wind of the North, who is coming off a fourth place finish at Harris, Philadelphia, in a winner's over trot last week. And for show, I will take Be a Magician, coming off her track record performance at Yonkers Raceway in her seasonal debut. Unfortunately for her, she will score down from post 10 with Brian Sears driving for trainer Nifty Norman. So once again in the Cutler Prep, I'm going with Miladies Monet to win, Wind of the North to place, and Be a Magician to show. And introducing on Morning Line, the Tweet of the Week. Our very first Tweet of the Week comes from a snarky Joe Fitzgerald. After Shake It Carry faded to six at Miami Valley, at Jaff3Joe thought she might be having the same problem as her transatlantic stablemate Maven. He tweeted, maybe Shake It Carry needs to go on a diet? That is no way to talk to the ladies, Joe. And we're also introducing a new segment where we want to hear from you, the fans, and people in the community. It's time for you to sound off on social. We'll ask the question and you tell us what you think on Facebook or by tweeting to us at US Trotting. This week's question is, we saw undefeated Wiglet Jiglet put in another commanding performance. Teak says he's the best he's ever trained, but it's been a long time since we've seen a February star carry that through the season. How do you think he'll fare in next month's North America Cup against the best of his division? And we'd like to remind you to follow us on Facebook, on Twitter at US Trotting, and on Instagram at US Trotting. On next week's show, we'll preview the Arthur Cutler Memorial at the Meadowlands and the Confederation Cup at Flamborough Downs. Be sure to join us then for another episode of Morning Line.